Welcome. I'd like to talk about a curious feature of the fractions. In fact, uh, if I let me draw the number line. Let's see if I can make this appear. Uh, there it is. Let's do the positive numbers, just positive fractions. I mean, we can extend what I'm about to do for the negatives as well for the moment. But here's the first fraction, zeros, like zero once. Um, I guess one we might be, maybe people consider the next fraction, that's one once, and then maybe two, two once, and three, three once, and so on. But there's also the in-between stuff. For example, between one and two, there's three halves. Between zero and one, there's a half. Between half and one, there's actually three quarters. In fact, I can keep doing this. Between any two fractions, I can always do the average, and that again will be a fraction. And if you like, you, you sort of get the sense that the fractions start to fill in the entire number line. I guess I'm focusing around one right now, but even it's happening over here. So it seems that the, they densely fill up the number line, that every point of the number line is being eventually going to be taken up with a fraction. So that's, what, that's one's feeling about the fractions. They seem to fill up the entire space of the number line. Well, this talk is actually going to count, uh, prove the other, that actually the fractions take up no space, despite being infinitely dense like this. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to rely on some pre-calculus ideas here, so we need to know the geometric series formula. First of all, we need to know from pre-calculus that 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up is 1 over 1 minus x. I'm going to use that to my advantage. In fact, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. It's so 1, 1 over 1 minus x minus 1. Um, I do have a video on the geometric series formula, so feel free to have a look at that in order to make sense of what we're doing now. But the other thing I'm going to do is um, use a remarkable fact that it is actually possible to put the fractions in a list. And one quick way to do that is, I guess I started earlier with zero being considered the first fraction. I'll, I'll count zero as the first fraction. Um, hang on, let me just uh, give myself some space here. I'll move this down. Oops, I just made my zero go funny. So we'll consider zero. Uh, where's my pen gone? Zero is the first fraction. And now I'll do, I'll just again stick with the positive fractions. All the fractions whose numerator and denominator add up to the number two. There's only one fraction that does that, one one. Then all the fractions whose numerator and denominator add up to three. Uh, one tooth and two once. One plus two is three, two plus one is three. Now I'll do the ones that add up to four. I'll do it systematically, one three, uh, two tooths and three once. Now I'll do the ones that whose numerator and denominator add up to five. Uh, one fourths, two thirds, three tooths, and um, four once. You see, obviously, I like playing with the English language. Most people don't say tooths, most people don't say once. And I can keep going, one fifth, and so on. Um, this will indeed cover all the fractions. In fact, the fraction, you know, 33 fifteenths will appear. It'll appear when I'm doing sums that add up to 48. So I do believe this will capture absolutely every fraction. Um, there are repeats, so what I could do is go, once I've got my list, go back through it and, and delete the repeats. For example, one month is, appears again over here as two tooths, so let me get rid of two tooths. Um, and I'm sure there are other repeats. But in any case, in the end, I could, if I was godlike, go beyond time and write down a list of all the fractions, one after the other, and, and cover the entire positive fractions. All right. Now, what I'd like to do now is imagine I had a piece of ribbon. And I'm going to give myself, I don't know, any length of ribbon I want. I'm going to cover each fraction in turn with a segment of ribbon. For example, the first fraction, 0, I'll cover with a 0.1 of a length of ribbon. In fact, let's, let's do this. Let's make this red ribbon. There it is. I put a little piece of 0.1 of a length of ribbon over the fraction 0. The next net fraction in my list, so there's 0, is the fraction 1. I'll put now a piece of ribbon, ribbon 0.01 of a length over it. 0.01. Tiny, a little bit tinier. There it is, covering the fraction. Whoops, what am I doing? Wrong spot. Covering the fraction 1, the second fraction of my list. It should be over here. Sorry, guys. There's 0.01 of a length of ribbon covering that spot. Next fraction of my list is a half. I will cover there a 0.001 of a length of ribbon. There it is, even tinier length. And I'm going to keep doing this in turn. And I'll get each fraction will be covered with a smidgen of ribbon. Now, there might be overlaps, and that's fine. I don't care if things are over overlapping. But I'm eventually, I'm going to ask myself, how much ribbon have I covered the fractions with? And I'm going to do this forever. I pretend I'm godlike. I can do this beyond the end of time. And every fraction will be covered by ribbon. But the amazing thing is, how much space does the ribbon cover up? Well, obviously, I can see a nice sum here. If I kept going with the sum and add up all the pieces, this first length plus the second length plus this third length adds up to 0 0.1111, which is 1 ninth. Or if I take the geometric series formula, take this formula here, and put in x equals 0 0.1, which is what I've done, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 squared, 0 0.1 cubed, I see it actually covers at most 1 minus 1 over 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 minus 1. Um, that's a 1 over 0 0.9 minus 1. 10 ninths minus 1 is indeed 1 ninth. 
So actually, I can conclude that these fractions, each covered by a piece of ribbon, are taking up no more than one ninth of an inch of space. This is actually a bit deep. I've taken a ribbon, covered it with little bits of ribbon, and these ribbons add up to no more than one ninth of an inch, and I've got every single fraction covered. So the amount of space that these fractions take up in the number line is actually no more than one ninth. Well, I just chose the number 0.01 for fun. What if I chose the number 0.001 for x? I'll do the same thing and start with the geometric series formula. I'll cover the first fraction of x, 0.001 of length of ribbon. And I'll cover the second fraction, which is the second fraction of length is 1, with x squared of a length of ribbon, that is 0.01 squared. Next fraction of my list with x cubed of a length of ribbon, and so on. I'll do this all again. I'll go be godlike and go beyond time. Eventually, I'll have every fraction covered by a little bit of ribbon, and I can ask, there might be overlaps, so I might be inefficient with my counting of space here, but it's, it's an inefficiency in my favor that I can say now that the fractions are covered by no more than the length of 1 over 1 minus 0 0.01 minus 1. That is um, 1 over 0.99 minus 1. That's 100 over 99 minus 1. That's 1 99th of an inch of space. So actually, the fractions take up no more than 1 99th of an inch of space on the number line. Well, nothing special about, the, about x being 0 0.01, but x being 0 0.001. And I can argue now that the fractions actually take up no more than 1 minus, whoop, one minus 0 0.001 minus 1 of an inch of space. That is, do the quick math, that's 1 999th inch of space. So, okay, how much space do the fractions take up on the number line? Well, it has to be some number that's smaller than a ninth, because I know that space is less than 1 ninth. It has to be some number that's also smaller than 1 99th because the amount of space is less than that. It's also some number smaller than 1 In fact, I keep doing this, and see so it has to be smaller than these, these, all these numbers I'm producing. Well, the only number that is smaller than each of these numbers is 0. And I can conclude then that the fractions take up 0 amount of space on the number line, which is weird, because certainly there's at least, you know, a thousand billion inches of space on the number line. There's an infinite number of inches on that number line and the fractions take up zero space of it. Which means most of the number line, most of the stuff that's on that line, doesn't correspond to a fraction. And this is actually philosophically wonderful. I guess we've just proved that most numbers are irrational. Yet we as human beings only ever seem to think in terms of fractions. Even when we think decimals, we always truncate them to a finite number of places. We only ever see fractions in everyday life. But what we see <laughs> really amounts to nothing than what's out there in the universe which I guess is a strange way of putting it, but it's kind of funky to put it that way. So there we have it. The rationals take up no space at all on the number line. Now what I've done is a bit fast, but I've written everything up in glorious detail in chapter 12 of volume one of my Thinking Mathematics series, which you'll find on my website. Shameless plug at the very end. All right, it's a lot of fun. Lots of details are there. Enjoy. Thanks so much.